Our next speaker is um, uh, Mr. Sebastian Williams, also ABD. I've known Sebastian since he was a Boy Scout. He was always tall, but he used to wear short pants. <laughs> he will talk about the counterintelligence services of um, the, the Polish Underground National Armed Forces. As you know, national armed forces are controversial. Why? Well, they were, the equal, they were an equal opportunity hater. They hated both the Nazis and communists. And they were not mainstream underground, so they didn't have to listen to the orders of the Polish government in exile in London, which said, well, you know, the Soviets are allies of our allies. They were just killing both Nazis and communists with equal panache. Extremely, extremely hardcore. The National Armed Forces. Uh, let's hear it from uh, Sebastian. Where was? Oh, here. Sorry. I'm all excited about Putin can't see straight. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your presence. I would like to introduce you a piece of uh, Polish history of uh, the anti-communist movement and the anti-communist intelligence as well. It is about uh, National Armed Forces counter-communist intelligence during the war under the German occupation of Poland. Of the patriots that were actively involved in the underground activities after the outbreak of the Second World War, practically all recognized that Poland had two enemies, Third Reich and Soviet, the Soviet Union. In their fight against the German Nazis, none of organizations fighting for independence ignored the communist threat. This was reflected in the way the, com the counter-communist intelligence and counter-intelligence uh, was organized and structured and activities. This was particularly apparent with the National Armed Forces. Its central intelligence and counter-intelligence units were arguably the best informed ones of all about the extremists from the left. Penetration by NSZ of the communist underground in the capital city of Warsaw, orientation in its activities and combating outcomes were all very impressive. Despite that, political concerns imposed limits on NSZ's actions. For that reason, the organization did not decide to take full advantage of its knowledge about communists, which would have made a complete elimination of their organizations, organi organizations possible. Outside Warsaw, the measures taken against the communists included actions against criminal elements connected to communism, including fighting revolutionary bandits. They were a lot more, more effective. On January 5, 1942, Polish Workers' Party, Polska Partia Robotnicza, and the Polish acronym uh, is PPR, was established in Warsaw by order uh, of Joseph Stalin. That party uh, whose name was later slightly modified, was to rule Poland for 45 years. Uh, PPR was formed to support the Red Army by way of diversion and sabotage in its fight, uh, in its, uh, fight against Germans. On the other hand, it was, this, uh, it was uh, to be the same Red Army that made <coughs> it possible for the communists to climb to power and it was the same army 
that uh, has over years been securing the grip on it. The beginning of the communist underground on the ter territory occupied by Germans were not easy though. They were stagma stigmatized as, so as Soviet agents and this has quite effectively deterred many people with radical social views and made it difficult to gain influence within the Polish society. On top of that, com the communists were unrelentingly hunted down by all major organizations committed to the cause of Polish independence. The Union of Armed Struggle, Związek Walki Zbrojnej, was succeeded by the Home Army, Armia Krajowa, the government delegation for, Pol for Poland, Delegatura Rządu Rzeczpospolitej na Kraj, the National Military Organization, Narodowa Mil Organizacja Wojskowa, and the, of course, National Armed Forces. All of them tasked their, their intelligence organizations with identification of communists as structures of interest they named PPR and its uh, armed arm the People's Guard Gwardia Ludowa and uh, the People's Army Army Ludowa and NKVD of course which was involved par parallel to the former ones. Indiv individual activities of communists and persons of radical views who after the liberation could support the communis communist system were recorded. Task the tasks involved current counterintelligence protection against penetration by the communist intelligence of own organizations and getting uh, counterintelligence organizations ready for the period immediately after the liberation when, based on experience from 1918 and uh, up to 1923, intensification of activist, uh, acti uh, activities by subversive elements was to be expected. And uh, if we are talking about sort of hybrid war, uh, Poland, uh, resurrecting Poland, faced this very well and uh, it was the first time when this sort of uh, military activity were um, used. The National Armed Forces began in September 1942 took the most determined position against communists of all Polish underground organizations. It was the largest and independent national movement organization. It combined the Lizard, Lizard Union, Związek Jaszczurczy, uh, military structures set up by the leaders of the National Radical Camp, Obus Narodowo Radykalny, and uh, that part of the national military organization um, that refused to subordinate itself to the commander-in-chief of the Home Army. And uh, in its February uh, 1943 declaration, it stated, NSZ will uphold order as our state reconstructs, reconstructs itself and will resolutely oppose any attempts by the communists to seize power as well as any anarchist elements or groups using political terror in order to not allow the Polish nation to decide about its political system and form of government. Apart from various forms of training, NSZ is currently involved in, a, in an underground struggle against the occupant and extripats the communist 
diversion. Uh, such an unequivocal and publicly declared position regarding the communists, who officially acted under auspices of an ally of our allies, as defined by uh, the Home Army Command and the delegates' office, was possible due to NSZ independence, both financial and political. The official underground, led by uh, mentioned uh, structures, as well as the Polish government in exile, had to follow the British policy toward the Soviet Union. Any attempt to challenge it would have expedited, expedited Poland's political catastrophe. NSZ activities against uh, the communists were in fact a, a safety valve for the leadership of the Polish underground state. In his testimony lodged with the Office of Security, Communist Office of Security after the war, Tadeusz Myśliński, head of uh, the head of civil in, uh, counterintelligence with the delegate's office, stated, of political reasons, the government delegation office and the Polish government in London could not openly oppose the Soviet Union. On the international arena and PPR internally. They have to restrict themselves to preparatory activities and maintain necessary discretion in respect of those. For the time being, they have to rely in the struggle, most of all, on the anti-communist activity of NSZ. It is known that they have been in conflict with the government delegation office and the Polish government in London. One could, therefore, always argue that its anti-communist actions were undertaken on its own and against the wish of the delegates of uh, delegates office. The counter-communist NSZ intelligence was rooted solely in the Lizard Union. In spring 1941, the command of the organization decided to create a counter-communist intelligence cell. At that time, it was called Communist, Communist Desk. During its activity in NSZ, the, com the code name was 4C Desk. It was a part of the Central of Intelligence Service. A, prom a prominent political activist and also a conservative press journalist, Antoni Sperli, was appointed as the head of this desk. His, supervi his supervisor, head of, the, uh, head of the CIS, presented to Sperli main tasks of the cell. In after war confession, the communist the two communists. Direction to all intelligence work, gather all information materials and analyze these in the most detailed manner possible, based on the obtained material after its analysis. Prepare detailed situation reports, draw conclusions, and signal on all significant manifestation of activities, activities by leftist organizations. Set up and manage personal files of activists. <coughs> Members even supporters of leftist organizations. Which organizations uh, were considered leftists? Most of all, groups asso 
associated with former the uh, Communist Party of Poland since early since early in 1942 with the PPR, uh, including its uh, armed arm G L and A L, a Union of Youth Struggle, Związek Walki Zbrojnej, left uh, left socialist organizations, pol uh, Polish socialists, the Polish socialists, the Polish Socialist Workers Party, Polska part uh, Polscy Socjaliści, i, and the uh, Robotnicza Partia Polskich Socjalistów, groups and organizations of liberal intelligentsia and naturally the Soviet intelligence and partisans. The 4C network operated exclusively inside Warsaw. Informa information from outside the city was collected by local intelligence network and passed on through the CIS had Gostomsky to be analyzed by Sperli and uh, to be used in its uh, reports. At the beginning of, uh, his, wo uh, of his work, Sperli had only one co-worker, Franciszek Krawczykowski, after the war sentenced to death. Three years later, several hundred persons on their, on their own and organized in special groups worked in Warsaw for the Central Counter-Communist Intelligence. In a June 1944 document, Speli mentioned 11 of his closest co-workers, his deputies, head of chancellery, five heads of surveillance units, and three independent agents. There were even more people involved uh, in the intelligence activities. And this a quotation of this document. Units agents naturally are not included here in the document when he listed his uh, closest co-workers. Personal files I keep in my, in my archive. I have also a few independent ones whose personal details I do not keep there. And I do not want to delay the dispatch of this, corres uh, of this correspondence to you. All military information you already have, wrote the chief of the 4C desk. Elsewhere, in the same document, the document its author provides his estimate as the numbers of people working within the surveillance units as varying from 150, occasionally getting up to uh, 200 uh, people. Uh, we, don't, we do not have any documents concerning uh, surveil the surveillance units. However, we know that the largest one uh, consisted uh, Boy Scouts and was uh, formed uh, within the Boy Scout of, uh, uh, underground organization. Apart from Sperling's test, both uh, the Lizard Union and later NSZ collected information about companies from the entire area of their operation. The manner of this particular intelligence work was regula uh, regulated uh, by the detailed counter K communist intelligence instruction. In spring 1943, uh, uh, it was sent to the local structures. The document pointed, pointed out the need for specialized, specialized counter communist cells to be set up, to set up for each area and district. It's, it specified the extent of information to be gathered, method, methods of work, and mentioned circles and organizations that needed to be under surveillance. It recommended involving in this work former attorneys 
and former, mem former members of military police and policemen as well. Uh -huh. Detailed information concerning activities of the counter-communist intelligence, their outcomes, problems, and the scope of its work were stored in the ar uh, ar archives of local NSZ structures. However, no complete area, in area intelligence archive has survived. We put this picture from small pieces of information uh, found in many different places in of diff, of, of many diff, diff, uh, many different uh, archives the work in the city environment differed from the work in the country environment where the tactical and counter communist intelligence were the same in many cases uh, it was caused by the increasing incidence of assaults by bandits which local communists sought to take advantage of to activize the population. For that reason, when looking for local bands conducting robberies, NSZ units at that same time would identify local political and military communist structures. In cities, the main intelligence work consisted in preparation in preparation to the after liberation period when attempts by Soviet agents to seize power were to be expected. For all gaps in the source material we do not know uh, we do know about a few people who were involved involved in the counter communist intelligence. In Podlasia, Podlachia the head of intelligence was Karol Seng, who, before the war, worked for the military counterintelligence. In the capital city of Warsaw, the head of intelligence was Zygmunt Ojzyński, a pre-war magistrate and deputy attorney who represented prosecution in a number of communist trials. His closest co-worker was Julian Czerwiakowski, who during the war worked, worked for the criminal police. In, uh, in the area uh, Lublin, of Lublin worked all, also a specialist, a military police officer. We don't know his name. It would appear, however, that such expert workers were exceptions. And, uh, Ojzyński and Czerwiakowski were uh, sentenced to death after the war and, remain, uh, and Czerwiakowski's remains were discovered uh, summer uh, this year uh, at the Powonski Military Cemetery uh, because after the execu execution his uh, family uh, didn't uh, receive his body. The NZ intelligence, similarly to NSZ as the whole, rely on unprofessional reserve soldiers who, however, often enough, were coping with this work better than professionals. In all certainty, the counter K intelligence instruction, which was sent out in spring 1943, acted uh, as a stimulus to intensif intensify the counter communist work. However, the individual regions stepped up those activities at different points in time and to various levels. For example, implementation of these guidelines, guidelines, guidelines in Lublin started as recommended in early 1944. At the time the city uh, and uh, district of Lublin commanding officer Captain Witold Mowczko, Captain Witold Mowczko sent uh, a letter to, his, uh, to this effect 
to the head of uh, uh, in, uh, area intelligence. Intelligence will set up a network of informers whose task it will be to conduct surveillance and report on disposition of local communist bands and partisans. He wrote. It will ascertain the names of those units and pseudonyms of their commanding officers as well as obtain maps with their quarters and or, or camps. To obtain exact information, one should attempt to secure informers in PPR cells. If that should prove impossible, infiltrate those by sending, sending ideologically proficient, rela reliable people with well-developed sense of intelligence. In other regions of the province of Lublin, due to the presence of communist partisan, partisan, partisans groups in forests, the tactical military intelligence performed the tasks of counter-communist intelligence. Presumably, this was also the case in the province of Kielce. From that area, personal details of local PPR activities and activities from other extreme groups were supplied in large quantities to the CIS. Well informed about communist activities were the NSZ structures in the district of Miechów. It's, it's in uh, southern, uh, it, uh, it is southern, uh, it is in su uh, southern uh, part of, uh, of Poland, where the person in charge of the entire, entire, entire intelligence work was Stefan Kośmider Wolbromski, the same who, uh, under another pseudonym, by mid 1944, was in charge for. The, uh, uh, in, uh, in charge of the whole era, area uh, intelligence in Krakow. Krakow. At that time, intelligence network, because of, uh, because of lack of uh, uh, financial support, was broken up and not funded adequately. In Krakow proper, there was a network providing information but its head lacked intelligence experience. As a result, information gathered by him was difficult to utilize and needed correction. In his letter to the headquarters, dated July 9, 1944, Koshmider reported uh, that he had difficulties working with the head of intelligence network for the city of Krakow, Kordian, name unknown, as he did not obey his orders. As far as surveillance of communists was concerned, he wrote point blank. I consider, I consider <coughs> it inappropriate to provide to Cordian funds which are reserved for the counter-K intelligence, as long as there is no counter-communist network created in Krakow's area, and and not until some sketchy, as it may be, information about communists has been gathered. Much better look the situation in Podlasia. Available materials show considerable penetration of communist groups by NSZ. According to historian Mariusz Bechta, the best one in uh, this Field. Reports from the local head of intelligence, Carol Seng, were uh, quotation, exceptional of exceptional of their profession of their professionalism, and were a proof for a deep penetration of PPR structures in the region. One can uh, one can <coughs> surmise that they uh, came directly from communist activities, communist activities, who were re recruited and paid for by the pre-war intelligence officer. This, this is how 
thanks uh, chief of the intelligence knowledge about communist groups in Sierunce and other part of region. He had from uh, he had from before the outbreak of World War II proved its value. So we have an example of what, of uh, the continuation of pre-war intelligence work of the same kind by the same people, but in different structures. Uh, in case of NSZ, in sort of unofficial uh, structures toward the Polish underground state. Uh, outcomes of surveillance by subversive organizations intelligence in the area of Warsaw and around uh, it were meager. There was an overlap in this area between its activities of units reporting directly to uh, for CDES, the central cell, whose head was uh, Speli, and those of information network that reported to the local uh, commander in, uh, uh, of uh, intelligence of the city of Warsaw, Ojrzyński. In, in a report by the head of the C, uh, 4C desk, which concerns the operation of the cell, the following assertion can be found. Similarly, Warsaw, Warsaw area recently ceased sending materials, materials concerning communists. While we are aware of serious obstacles that hamper work there, it is not likely for them to have lost all their contacts with communists or not have established new ones. Possible. Absence absence of information about the extreme left was a result of the uh, entire Warsaw NSZ intelligence having been directed to focus on the counter-German intelligence. Another possible explanation would be for area intelligence officers having been moved to work at the headquarters or seconded to place outside outside Warsaw to fill in vacancies there. If so, such, such decisions have uh, very much weakened the Warsaw intelligence officers' cadre. We have to, we have, we have to remember that, uh, that the NSZ, the, the NSZ uh, didn't receive any financial support from London, from the Polish government in exile, and uh, they fin financially based on um, goodwill of uh, uh, Poles. And uh, we can see in almost every, every document concerning uh, bu bu NSZ uh, budget that they, basically speaking, they really don't have money and uh, they uh, complain all the time about lack of uh, subsidiaries. We have no comprehensive information available to us about the intelligence work concerning the anti-independence left that was conducted in Pomoria, Pomerania, Pom Pomerania Poznań, which areas of the Western Territories Inspectorate. Inspectorate Ziem Zachodni. The name of the information network, there was Expositura Zachód, uh, the West Network, the West Network. The anti-communist work was carried out there by the Lizard Union as early as in the first half of 1942, with some successes in Gdańsk and Łódź. In, report, in reports from that period, we, uh, we find some interesting references. From the Gdańsk area, that's quotation, from the Gdańsk area information is fairly accurate, no, re no reports in the last few weeks, though. Our agents are within the communist structures. One of them has won complete trust as an active group member, and further, 
which, exposit, uh, which network advises us that over the last few days our agents were able to recognize and study uh, an immensely important area of Skiash, obtain, obtaining data about the communist leadership, their contact place and names of their liaisons with Warsaw. But because of lack of money, by, uh, by the end and uh, by the end German repressions, by the end of 1943, the Z, the Z, the, the W network has become far less active. In uh, January 1944, its activity started. The above presented materials come from five. I said 45, 44. 44. 44. The above presented materials come from several areas and show that the intelligence work in various areas was carried out with different, uh, differing intensity and was bringing disparate results. As shown for the city of Warsaw, uh, even when fairly competent command was available, and counterintelligence was achieving successes. This did not necessarily guarantee successes in the counter-communist war. A very interesting issue in uh, this uh, sort of NSZ activity is Częstochowa, and in the period of time from October 1944 till January 1945, which merits a uh, separate study. This was the best known city-based anti-communist ap 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 uh, operation carried out by the Polish underground. It was both intelligence and elimination. Uh, during the period of time the area, uh, that area intelligence was coordinated by the former by the former 4C best team, which moved to Częstochowa after the collapse of the Warsaw Rising. The former head of the desk, as an advisor to the head of uh, intelligence, tasking surveillance brigades composed of the youth of Częstochowa. He had surve surveillance brigades with cryptonyms, pigeons, lapwings, herons, and wolves at his disposal. Intelligence work, intelligence work was also conducted in Radomsk and Piotrów Trybunalski districts. NSZ, the NSZ members from the Częstochowa area has, have exposed a considerable number of activists from the extreme left, leaders of structures subordinated to communist, uh, communist underground, left socialists and peasants party groups, and Soviet paratroopers from the Free Germany Committee as well. Detailed studies are required to assess the efficiency of intelligence asset, assets involved <coughs> and to establish the fate of communists and suspected communism sympathizers covered by this uh, operation. The entire operation was carried out simultaneously with the preparation of the ev evacuation of the Holy of the Holy Cross Brigade, which operated in within this area, and it would be uh, it would have had a covering character in respect of the latter one. Uh, of the entire war underground uh, of the entire war underground structure, the national count organizations were the most adamant ones in their opposition against the Soviet, the Soviets and the Soviet and communist threat. Under occupation they continued the work of such pre-war state organs like uh, civil counterintelligence, defensiva, defen uh, or DEFA, uh, and military intelligence as well. The anti-communist activity was a result 
of the threat to communism posed for Poland's independence. During the 20 years long, we, uh, do, during the 20 years long interwar period, there was an abundant experience of anti-Polish activities by the extreme left. Terrorist activities, attempts to take over by uh, take over the power by force. That was what Polish underground feared from communists and their supporters. That is why a cooperation agreement was concluded between the government delegation security department, represented by its head, Tadeusz Myśliński, and the, the NSZ intelligence, represented by, represented by Antoni Sperli. It is, uh, it is uh, worth uh, to be uh, underlined that the idea, of, the idea of this alliance was conceived by one of the founding fathers of Polish scouting, Henry Glass, uh, established an established expert power on uh, communism and anti-communist uh, activi uh, activity, uh, who at the time, at the time, at time of the war, had it the underground anti-communist alliance. It was set up in the, in the 1920s uh, um, in, in Warsaw and, uh, in, and uh, closely cooperated with many, many social uh, uh, <coughs> Polish uh, interwar organizations. The anti... Uh, NGOs. NGOs, yes. The NSZ command in principle worked together with other independence organizations in the field of intelligence and uh, uh, security and this is, uh, this is one of the, the best examples of, uh, of this cooperation. The underground anti-communist activities were not restricted to actions against criminal and revo revolutionary partisans, partisan units but involved also intelligence and counterintelligence activity, activities by the National Military Organization, Organization, Lizard Union, later also by the National Armed Forces, that emerged from them, as well as organization derived or re related to the former ones. Paradoxically, the anti-communist platform served to unite national camp organizations with structures that were dominated by follow, uh, followers of the Sanatia, the, the pre-war ruling movement, um, and groups not sympathetic to the national camp. This synergic cooperation had to be kept secret due to the political game the Polish government play, played with the ally of our allies. It was also the game that did not allow for either home army or the government delegation to resolutely oppose the Soviet agent, agents' rings in Poland. The Polish Workers' Party and the People's Guard and the, the People's Army. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, thank you very much. A couple of remarks. As you see, the definition of, by the National Armed Forces of uh, leftists was extremely flexible. It included hardcore GRU and NKVD operators, as well as useful idiots, and everybody in between. Now, the useful idiots should not have been targeted for assassination, and they were not. They, Nonetheless, there are lists compiled of various progressives, bless their hearts, some of them, who have no idea what they could be involved with. with. For example, there was a famous Elena Sendler, whose main activity was uh, to work with the Catholic Church and the Office of the Government's Delegate. 
to save Jewish children from the ghetto. Why? Well, if you didn't, and she was a progressive, so she didn't have friends uh, with the Catholic Church, how do you think she procured falsified baptismal certificates? So she had to work with some uh, Catholic, usually anti-communist circles. At the same time, they noticed, oh, she comes to us, uh, she gets fake papers for Jewish children, then she, gave, she gives us Jewish children, we put them up with the nuns usually to be saved, but she hangs out with people who hang out with commies. Let's put her on the list. You see, don't take the, uh, the, don't take the, the, the sometimes extremely trigger-happy imagination of counterintelligence for death lists. They just wrote everybody down who went to certain places or associated willingly or not or knowingly or not with certain people. Okay, so that's very important to understand. Second point I wanted to raise is methodology. Uh, so it happened that aside from Mr. Shemashko was in London and who survived the Gulag, I was basically the only person in exile who dealt with the National Armed Forces. I really had no idea about anything. I mean, there was a, I remember Pan Engineer Jerzy Pilaczyński living in California next to us. He was with the NSZ uh, command propaganda. He would always gripe uh, about the National Radicals because he was an ending. So he was with the mainstream nationalists. He didn't like the National Radicals. So I knew there were divisions. And I knew he participated in the underground. He was a brave officer. He fought in the Warsaw Uprising. I met a few others. I met a few others. They struck me as, you know, Polish patriots, very anti-communist, which I like too. But as I said, they were all equal opportunity haters. There was no sympathy for <coughs> anything Nazi uh, or German, in fact. They were really hardcore. When I went to Poland for the first time after 1989, I would, I would try to talk to people, including professors at the University of Warsaw. Oh, no, those are Polish Nazis. I said, yeah? Who was the commanding officer? I don't know. I'm sorry, this is a professor of history specializing exactly in this period. He tells me he doesn't know uh, uh, the structure of the organization of main personalities, and he pontificates about its ideological profile. That's just a joke. Hit the archives, buddy. I know the communists closed the archives. And here's the question of methodology. Sebastian and there are a few other people actually bothered to go to the archives. Sometimes to get a line in his paper, you would have to travel to seven places. Sometimes to get a line in the paper to ascertain who that person was, it entailed digging through, I kid you not, 40 pounds of documents. And then you have to guess. Why? Because they were really professional. For instance, unlike the Home Army, which was in its leadership, but not rank and file, largely romantic Pilsudskiites. The NSZ had a ban on publishing or even reporting its military actions. So I could find out from Gestapo or German police documents if they ever were able to ascertain who it was, more about the National Armed Forces operation, then from their propaganda, they didn't talk about any action. In fact, when they conducted an anti-German action, almost some, some Germans and killed them, they said they were Soviet partisans. Do you know why? Because the Germans would then do, the Germans would then not shoot Poles, Polish civilians in their prize zone. Most of the time, so it was smart, but horrible for the historian. Horrible. It's very hard to, to, to get this stuff. Also, now we have secret police documents, communist secret police. And before we embrace any nuggets we find there, we have to remember that most of what the secret police, communist secret police gathered, had to be tortured out of, the, of those unfortunate to have survived the war. They were tortured. So, before we agree to anything, we have to to, to, to uh, bring it out, we have to check and cross-check, and sometimes it's impossible. 
Because then, if they were put on trial, if they survived their interrogation, the uh, communists would invariably make it a show trial, and, uh, and the communists would say, oh yes, these were Polish Nazis killing Jews, Soviet prisoners of war, because they were uh, so hateful, racial. So, I'm sorry. <coughs> and you have to go to every single locality, check out every single thing. It takes a very long time to get a pic any picture. It took me uh, a long time. I've been at this business uh, uh, for 25 years to assemble a collection of uh, their underground press uh, entailed a lot of bribery and copying. You know, secret policemen, when communism imploded, privatized parts of the archives, and they started selling things. So I was able to get stuff, more stuff, from the Hoover Institution in California than from Poland. Also, because I have friends and I can't afford, you know, five cents a copy, I can't afford $5,000 for a pocket that nobody wants to open and show to me before I buy it. At any rate, it is a daunting proposition in many instances. That includes some areas of home army operation to find anything. Do you know what we found out? There was a, a German installation, Nazi installation at Peneminde. Do you know what that is? V1 weapons. Guess who found out where it was? The Lizard Union, so Poland's nationalist radicals, people who used to greet each other like this before the war. They found the place and uh, they passed the intel to mainstream home army. The home army told the Brits, and Brits, the Brits and the Americans bombed it into the smithereens. <laughs> Including uh, a couple of intel people of the Lizard Union who were there as slave laborers, who had smuggled the stuff out in the first place. And what do you do with a, a piece of information? Uh, the Gestapo or the Abwehr brags that they busted a bunch of Polish nationalists from the Lizard Union in the, in the Wehrmacht garrison in Nantes. Do you understand what it means? In occupied France, in the Wehrmacht garrison, there was a cell of the Lizard Union who provided intelligence to the Allies, Poland's national rad nationalist radicals. Do you know who they were? They were Wehrmacht soldiers forcibly impressed into the Wehrmacht because one of their great-great-grandfathers was German. And they were told, if you don't go, we shoot you and we send your family to Auschwitz. In 1941, in the fall, Hitler ordered a draft in Pomerania, Poznania, and Silesia of Poles. This was illegal in light of international law. But because of the Nazi calisthenics, remember how I was talking about who is a Jew? Or who is a German? Well, when <coughs> things turned tough and the Germans needed cannon fodder, especially on the Eastern Front, they drafted anybody that they would be able to find a, a fraction of. One sixteenth German. And put them in the Wehrmacht. This way, in, 19, fall, in the fall of 1941, Winter 1942, when Germany took its first beating from the Soviets, a, almost the entire organization, or at least 85% of the net of the Lizard Union and the National Armed Forces in Pomerania was destroyed by simply drafting them. So their commanding officer who passed away, Captain Osmulski passed away in Paris, left them, uh, la, la, uh, issued the last order for the organization. Polish soldiers, when you're drafted into the Wehrmacht, your first duty as a Polish soldier, when you find yourself on the Western Front, is to desert right away. <laughs> Polish soldier, when you find yourself on the Eastern Front, your first duty as a Polish soldier is to fight till the last drop of blood. <laughs> because they would be killing communists. <laughs> you know, business before pleasure. You have to, see, you have to desert from the from the um, uh, Wehrmacht, from the German army, and join the Allies. But if you desert from uh, the German army, the, the Soviets will shoot you. So you better stay there and kill them as many as you can. And those were not charming times. 
and we're digging in an organization that existed in, uh, in communist propaganda, propaganda as a boogeyman, as a myth. Almost no research. Okay, so methodology is daunting. All of this, this, this paper by Sebastian, shows you that from September 1939, Poland faced two enemies. Two enemies. Hitler and Stalin. The third guy and the USSR invaded Poland. That's how the Second World War was possible. They were friends. Unlike President Roosevelt, who thought Uncle Joe was Uncle Joe, the Poles thought that he was a mass murderer. Worse than, than Hitler, because he had killed more people than Hitler, before Hitler even uh, uh, fired off a shot. And then they were, there was no differentiation for the National Armed Forces, and the same goes for the Home Army. There was no differentiation except the Home Army couldn't say it openly because the Home Army was subordinated to the Polish government in exile, which was a guest of the British in London. So, here is a personal story. One of my friends, who was later involved with the human rights movement, the committee to, uh, not the committee to defend workers, but the movement for the civil and human rights in Poland in the 1970s, that's when he got out of jail first in 1956, he had nine consecutive death sentences from the communists. And then he was in jail in the 60s and 70s for human rights activities. So anyway, uh, he was a commando dropped into Nazi-occupied Poland in 1943, Marian Gołębiewski. And he said to me, oh, you know, the NSZ was great because I would talk to your great uncle, uh, my great aunt's six time, times removed husband, who was a major, and I would make a deal. We would pick off communists if they were robbing people, or raping, or doing anything like this, and we would blame it on the NSZ. Of course, we were the home army, but you know, we could blame it on the NSZ, and the NSZ would say, yes, yes, we did that. <laughs> so I was off the hook. Yes. At any rate, this is a topic unknown, ladies and gentlemen. I encourage a research, and I would like, you don't have to love them, embrace them, I just would like scholarship on them. And scholarship is sorely lacking. Why? Well, it's because Poland lost World War II, so it took 50 years before we could hit the archives and actually research so-called controversial issues. <laughs>